I'm Bree, and this is TJ. In 2017, we decided to break away from the norm and travel the U.S. in our custom 4x4 van and Airstream. We loaded up our two dogs, Madley and Brody, and hit the road. We quickly realized life on the road is full of surprises, and our name-embracing detours fit our new life perfectly. Please subscribe, and welcome to the adventure. All right, we've come to Hutchinson, Kansas, and it is the home of Stratica. TJ has been very excited about this. <laughs> I um, am. Stratica is a salt mine, 650 feet underground that they've, we're not entirely sure, I think they turned it into a museum and now it's an attraction that you can tour. And we figure on this gloomy, rainy, crappy day, what better to do than go 650 feet underground? <laughs> Let's do this. What has happened here is geologists say that Roughly about 275 million years ago, this area was a shallow salt sea. During the dry periods, the sea would evaporate completely and leave nothing but salt on the basin of the sea floor or the bottom. And this is where we are now. We are at the bottom or the basin of a 400 foot thick stack of layers of salt. So, we're 650 feet underground. Yes. It was actually an incredibly quick elevator ride. It was. Six, right? In the, all in the dark. It's kind of weird. <laughs> we're walking through right now is called the Narrows because it's the narrowest part of the mine. It's also the most recent mining activity. This area was mined back in 2004, and it's really just a passageway between the original mine ahead of us that was built in the 1930s and the newer section behind us that we came down into. Uh, so this section up ahead is actually where the museum is. is one of the mining vehicles behind us. Apparently the mine discontinued the rail system and now use cars and trucks to get around instead. But they buy them used, take them apart, discard the doors and windows. But basically the vehicles have to fit down that same tiny four foot by five foot shaft that we came down in. set off a series of blasts in sequence. This was dangerous. Later, they used the non-electric fuse and cap method of blasting, which because the burning fuse was visible, was safer. You may now exit. It's one of the businesses down here in the mine. It's called Underground Vault and Storage. 
and they, because of the constant temperature and humidities and the security of this, because we're 650 feet underground, they use this area to store uh, movie memorabilia, uh, anything of value, old x-rays, anything that is sensitive to the environment is stored down here. Is this, is this like the second favorite movie after Dumb and Dumber, perhaps? It's pretty close. <laughs> it's probably the, the movie that you quote the second most after Dumb and Dumber. Probably so, yes. So I don't know that anybody even knows what movie it is. In fact, this might be a fun little like trivia moment. Yeah, we won't say. All right, what movie? <laughs> what movie is this costume from? I just wanted to show you how stylish Brie is with her hat. She just fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> she's gotta wear it to the side like she's a gangster. It's not. It's not. It's, they're really uncomfortable. They actually. are uncomfortable. It's actually giving me a headache. Yeah, it's like hurting my head, and so yeah. I was trying to adjust it. But, uh, but then they fall off. Yeah, it's just, it's so, a big mess. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. There you go. There she goes. <laughs> gangster stuff. <laughs> So there is over 1.6 million square feet of storage space down here. U, V, and S is only using about 5% of that. So there's a lot of room for more stuff down here. So there are actually three companies that are still in business down in this salt mine. There is the Hutchison Salt Mine, which they're still actively mining salt down here. There's... Uh, near here. Yeah, not where we are, obviously. Um, there's the film company. Do you yep. remember the name? Underground Vault and Storage. U-V-S. U-V-N-S. U-V-N-S. And then Stratica is the museum and the company that we bought our tickets through right. today to tour this area down here. Yeah. Pretty good use of one place. <laughs> yeah. All right, well that's a wrap on the salt mine tour. It's much colder up here. Yes. <laughs> so what do you think? I thought that was great. It was really fun, really interesting. And I don't know if we mentioned this yet or not, but this is also a harvest toast. Yes. So we're staying the night here. Exactly, yeah. So it's $19 a person to do the tour. At, and staying here tonight kind of helps offset that cost for us. I'm going to sound probably really dumb here and just tell you guys that I didn't even know salt was mined. I never really thought about how salt came to be. Um, but yeah, salt mining, that's like a, I learned so much new stuff today. <laughs> I thought it was interesting here that they, when they mine salt in this, in this area, 70% of that salt goes for salting roads. And then the other 30% goes into animal feed, like salt licks and salt blocks and things like that. Yeah. So none of this salt is a uh, human grade edible. Another interesting thing we learned on the tour was that everything that goes down into the salt mine stays in the salt mine. Stays so down. All the garbage, everything stays down all there. All the vehicles, they just kind of push them off into a corner if it breaks down and they can't fix it. Because uh, I, I guess it's so difficult and expensive to get things back up to the surface. And they've got room down there, you know, once they've mined it. They did say that the, the mine itself after I don't know how many years, but quite a few years, mm -hmm. will actually close itself back up. It kind of heals itself yep. and will grow back in on itself. Yeah, they called them floor heaves and and ceiling falls. Yeah. yeah. It was kind of interesting that, you know, at, at some time the area that we were in will be closed, closed up. off again. Right? The, the earth will seal itself up. Yeah. 
for Nate. It is, yeah. That that was definitely an interesting, unique thing to do. Yeah, it's good awesome. find. Check it out. Remember when I told you it was super windy the other day? It's windy again, but we're not hanging around this time. For it to stop. Uh, yeah, we're in a parking lot. It's Stratica. Not exactly the place we want to hang out, but at least it's sunny. And warm, it's supposed to get to 80 today. But yeah, moving on. Yep. Good thing we only have about an hour to go today. Pretty windy out here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Take it slow and drive short. This is one area where our hitch is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Many of you have asked us about our, we have a pro pride hitch. It was one of those things where we, it took us months and months and months to decide whether we should spend the money or not. And once we did, it's been, I would think, one of the best investments, I call it an investment, we've put on our trailer yet. It, yeah. I don't tow as much as TJ, but he says it was a night and day difference. It gives him a ton of peace of mind, especially towing in more inclement conditions like super windy days where your trailer is being pushed around like crazy. Um, it really and helps. Not to say that we still don't move. I mean, it's, it's, the wind is still blowing us, but we move as one unit now rather than the kind of the tail wagging the dog situation, so. And that's where you really get into yeah. trouble, the tail wagging the dog. That's yeah. where you end up jackknifing and causing accidents and all of that. Swaying out of control. Yeah. But we've been extremely happy with it. We have, and that's not to say that other hitches aren't good and don't get the job done. No, absolutely. But, you know, we made the decision a few years ago to spend the money on a Pro Pride, and it's been a really great decision. So, all right, well, yeah. let's, let's go to Wichita. Don't go in that water, Brody. Let's not make the first thing we do get wet. Look, guys, someone left a toy. It's a toy. Oh, ready? <laughs> in Wichita. We're like half an hour away from Wichita. Um, we're staying at the Santa Fe Lake campground, which is pretty darn nice. It's either $18 or $26 a night. They, the camping is $18, but then they might make us buy a like park permit at $8 a day. So I'm hoping for $18. The other weird thing about this park is where they put the electric hookup. It's on the wrong side. And our cord is long enough that we're just gonna run it under the trailer um, to the electric hookups, which are on our driver's side. I think it's windy enough out here today, good lord. One more weird thing about this park, maybe you guys can solve this mystery for me. What in the world? is this. Look, they're all over the ground. It appears to be a fruit, maybe. Looks like something chewed on this one. And it kind of looks like a brain. I don't know, it's really weird. It doesn't, oh, it is in the trees. It's coming out of the trees. Oh, I hope we didn't park under this. So those big green brain looking things? Are coming out of the trees. Did we park under one? I don't think so. I don't see any up there. All right, well, that's good because I feel like that would totally put a dent in the trailer. Brody wants to show you what he found. Did you get a toy? <laughs> so tough. 
What do you think of our spot? What do you think? Don't let the dogs in. Should we let them out in the water? They went in the water. I told them not to. They didn't listen. Yeah. They like the water. Uh. <laughs> you guys have to stay out there. You got wet and dirty. Yeah? Remember when I told you not to get in the water? This was why. All right, just paid. It was $26. <laughs> Everything we read online said 18, but yeah, they made you pay the $8 daily use fee, which, well, I have thoughts about that, but I'll keep them to myself. <laughs> it is a nice place, but it would have been nicer at 18. I am beyond excited about our first stop in Wichita. I have been trying to get to one of these houses for years all over the country and it's never worked out. This is the first time I've ever had the opportunity to visit a Frank Lloyd Wright house. Unfortunately, we're not able to go inside. They are still offering tours even during COVID, um, but they're just once a day at one o'clock. Only four people are allowed in, which would be amazing, but um, I think we're headed out tomorrow, so we're not gonna get a chance to go in. But you can still see it from the outside. Oh my gosh. Well. Bucket list item. <laughs> I'm gonna be smiling for at least a week over this. Bree has been talking about a Frank Lloyd Wright house for ever. For ever. as long as I can remember, she's wanted to see one. They're just special. Keeper of the Prairie. I think it's the Keeper of the Plains. Keeper of the Plains. <laughs> One of those two. Keep it both. There's a really fabulous park here where the Keeper of the Plains statue is displayed. They've got suspension bridges coming from either direction to the platform where the statue is. Um, and those bridges actually go over the Little Arkansas and Big Arkansas rivers. Uh, so this is actually right where those two rivers converge. And it's just 
I mean, it's just amazing. It's a really great, beautiful display. What is your reaction to the Keeper of the Plains? I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's really cool the way I have the setup with the two bridges and then the statue in the middle. It's a really pretty neat thing here in the middle of downtown. Oh man, that breeze is cold. That's crazy how quickly it changed. That breeze came and brought the cold air with it. And it must have dropped 10 degrees. At least, yeah. And like the snap of your finger. Okay. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Just hitching up to leave. I think this is the kind of weather people die in. Let's get out of here before we die of exposure. <laughs> yes, I'm dramatic. What? Did I hear you say you were dramatic? <laughs> no. You never oh, would have believed that. <laughs> Anyways, are you ready for this today? Uh, are you made it from, from the break to the van? <laughs> Amazing. We get it. We get it. <laughs> but <I'm tonight. laughs> it's nasty outside. Do you it's deny ugly. it's nasty? No, not at all. It's <laughs> ugly. It's cold. It's windy. It's brutal. I don't think you'll die. I might not die. I don't know. It's still questionable. Are you ready for this drive? Waiting on you. In the end, it's the wind that's chased us out of Kansas, but we've thoroughly enjoyed our few stops here. As always, a big thank you to our patrons whose support help make these videos possible. If you'd like to help support the production of our videos, please head over to patreon.com forward slash embracing detours. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.